I got more Colorado parts. This is gonna be awesome. All right guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the vlog. So today we are gonna be installing these AEV Bison flares and I've been waiting a long time to do this and uh, I, the time finally came. You know, Black Friday rolled around and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get these things because Peak Suspension was running these on a killer deal and I'll get them like 66 to $70 off somewhere in there. So uh, yeah, let's unbox these things and uh, we're gonna see how they work on a non-bison. Still got the muscle truck. A lot of you guys wonder about that. It's still here. It's just kind of on pause. So Y'all bear with me. We're building the ZR2 right now. I know some of you guys are anxious about the muscle truck. I got stuff coming. I got you, just, just bear with me. We're gonna finish this ZR2 first. So this is uh, the first video that I'm aware of of anybody putting ZR2 Bison flares on a regular Colorado. Now keep in mind this truck, the only thing's done to this, it has a ready lift spacer. It's running a set of Alpha Command wheels, also from Peak Suspension. They are a plus 10 offset, so they're actually uh, more on the conservative side, which you can see it just a slight poke which is gonna keep you from rubbing like crazy. Uh, and uh, the idea here is to be able to put the bison flares on with minimal to no trimming and hopefully no rubbing. Of course, right now we don't really have any rubbing. Uh, when I fully flex this thing out off-road on Imogene Pass, as you guys saw in the Colorado Expedition, we did get just a slight little bit of rub, not anything too bad. Anyways, we're gonna unbox the flares now and I'm gonna walk you guys through an install on these. Um, it looks pretty straightforward. We're gonna start off by removing the factory flares and uh, we've got to drill a bunch of holes. It's going to be kind of painful to do. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just, uh, you can't let good judgment get in the way of something you want. So let's freaking do it. Let's put these things on. So I want to show you what you're working with when you open the box. Keep in mind, these, these flares, if you're wondering, they're not cheap, guys. So these things, they're gonna set you back right around $650, $700, depending on where you get them from. Of course, I got them on a little bit of a deal. So this is your uh, template. It's not really confidence inspiring when you've got paper and I have to cut it. I don't like that at all, but you know what? We're rolling with the punches here. All right, so here's your template. Apparently, hopefully, the scale is correct, and I think it is. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to match this up with the existing holes, and then we're gonna pray and start drilling. So <laughs> hopefully I don't ruin this freaking fender uh, by getting anything off, but we're gonna send it. We're gonna see if it works. So uh, instead of boring you guys by cutting this out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that part. We're gonna cut this thing out and uh, lay it on there. So let's take a look at the flares. Let's see what we're working with here. Now, I don't think the Boston flares give you any kind of an advantage as far as running a bigger tire. It is purely an aesthetic thing and it's more or less just more protection for the actual body of the truck. Everything's there and it looks like they uh, shipped them without destroying anything, so uh, that's good news. So now we're gonna start cutting this template out. I'm gonna save you guys the boringness of actually watching that and uh, let's go ahead and cut this thing and I'm gonna show you how to take a uh, factory flares off your ZR2. All right guys, so we got all of our templates cut out. Go ahead and set aside a solid hour and a half to do this correctly. And keep in mind, I didn't get super, super duper precise, but I got about as good as I could do without just losing my mind. These holes are pretty darn tough to cut out. I mean, they are seriously really tough. So the best thing that I found to do this with, obviously if you had like a hole punch that was the right size or some type of a kit that you could just center that up and boom, knock a hole in it. What I did was I took this little razor blade and I just followed along the edges. You can see I actually got pretty darn close to where I need to be. Uh, the good news is, is that, you know, this is gonna kind of save you a little bit because the existing flares on the truck, there's already holes there for those flares. These are also gonna use the existing holes. So you do have a little bit of saving grace here, but I'm not gonna guarantee you a whole lot of saving grace. I mean, we're talking maybe 30 to 40 thousands off is probably about the most you could be. And I'm just spitting out some numbers. We'll know more when we put this thing on. But uh, I wanted to stop and just show you 
how much time is involved and why you need to take your time when you do this to make sure you do it right. It's just, uh, it's one of those annoying things that you just hate to do, but you have to do. All right, so I wanna show you where these bolts are real quick. So you've got uh, a couple down here and the rest of this is gonna pop right off. It literally just comes right off. It's got these little snap uh, plastic tabs in there. Um, and you can see this is how much trimming I did to clear 33. And uh, what little bit of rubbing I do get, you can see it's back there on this other portion. Uh, not really related to the flare, more related to the fender. And that's only excessive, like really hard wheeling that I've ever rubbed. So let's go ahead and take this off now. All right, guys. So this is uh, basically what this thing looks like once you take all this apart. And mine is pretty much filthy because I use this truck and we go off road and, you know, it gets drove. So don't expect pristine stuff here. You know, this is real world stuff. But so your stock fender, as you can see, they did a pretty good job drilling the stock holes and the new fender is going to relocate that hole up here. So I'm going to grab a template, clean this off first because this is horrible. And uh, we're going to get an idea of how how close you've got to be. Now, one thing that I was super worried about with this was how accurate do I need to be? Luckily, in our case, you're going to get a little bit of uh, leeway here. You can see this movement. It's gonna be hard to see it on the camera, but you're gonna get a little bit of movement, not a lot. So you do have a little bit of saving grace if you do miss it. And uh, I would say that's probably why they did the kit the way they did. Mostly because it's about the only way you can do the kit that's like economical. And the other reason is because, well, you know, you're, you're just, you're kind of at your own risk doing this. But uh, yeah, I'm so glad that they did build a little bit of leeway in there. So. Oh, makes me feel a little bit better about doing it, but uh, still, you're drilling holes in the side of your truck, and it's just uh, scary. So, one more thing, just before we throw this on there. Look at the difference in a Bison flare and a normal ZR2 flare. I mean, it is crazy at the coverage you get with a Bison flare, so you are going to get some more body protection. And I just kind of held this up here just to show you guys what's going on. You do get a little bit of play in these clamps. It is just like the others you can see there. I've got a little bit of wiggle room, not a whole lot. Now keep in mind, these are genuine GM flares from AEV. So you're not buying some kind of Chinese thing that isn't designed to fit the truck. All right, guys, here we go. This is it. I've got the template laid out and things line up pretty good. Um, you do want to be pretty accurate when you cut these holes. I mean, don't be... Uh, just fooling around with it like I did down here. I got a little careless. Luckily, I had the rest of the holes to kind of help line myself up. Now, I'm just using simple Scotch painter's tape, nothing fancy. Uh, I placed it on here, and I've moved the thing probably four or five times just to get it to this. But uh, everywhere you see a blue piece of tape at the top is going to be a hole. So this is uh, kind of nerve-wracking, but uh, we're going to do it. And this is it. So uh, before I drill, though, before I drill, I, I am going to go ahead and do the other side. And uh, then we're going to start pulling the flares off the rear just to go ahead and get things ready. I've got a T15 there and there. The rest of this is all those little pop screw things. Uh, they'll come right out, these retaining clips. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull this one out, pull the front one out, take the flare off. And uh, we're going to size up the other templates, and then we're going to say a prayer before we start doing this, and then we're going to drill some holes. So let's go ahead and get this flare off. I'm going to show you guys the rear. So the rears are not all just clips. Uh, I just wanted to stop and show you guys this real quick. There is a couple extra tidbits here. You've got a one of these little pop clips that just pops loose here. you got a T15 here, T15 here, T15 here. There's your other pop which I kind of wonder if that's actually supposed to be in there, but uh, this truck is used, so it wouldn't surprise me. But so far, yeah, it, mostly it's T-15s. So you got one, uh, as total, all the spots you need to look for, you got one here, 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 and here. Now, one other thing. This piece right here is molded into this. It is actually all one piece, as you can see. They do not separate, so I started kind of pulling on that because I thought that maybe that clip 
will actually release that and maybe that stays with the inner fender it does not stay with the inner fender i'm going to show you what i'm talking about real quick uh, it's not really a big deal but just be aware of this as you're pulling you can see it right there now that is actually not part of your uh, inner fender it's not part of the inner fender it's part of the flare so be aware of that when you go to take this out you're going to have to take both of those t15s loose this t15 and don't forget you've got a small retaining clip on the bottom and that's how you take the rear flares off this is the moment you've been waiting for and we're going to start drilling so um, I'm kind of nervous about this. I've looked at this several times and I feel like I'm 95%. I feel like I'm really, really close where I need to be. Everything lines up pretty good. I'm gonna walk through this with you guys real quick. Here's the rear. Everything looks spot on. So everything is, you know, my, my template is pulled down nice and tight. I don't have like some huge wrinkles in it trying to stretch and pull it weird ways. So. Here's the other side. Everything is down over here really good. This side turned out pretty good. And the fronts, those turned out pretty good too. A little tip, if you're having trouble getting this template to stay, uh, take your inner liner and tuck it up inside your fender. That, that overlap is just enough to throw you off. You can see I've got mine tucked in behind. If you leave that out, it will throw the template off. It is gonna kinda cause some waviness in it and uh, you may find yourself chasing your tail a little bit trying to get that template to center up. So get that liner out of your way and uh, it's gonna save you a little bit of a headache on the fronts. So a couple things to note. Uh, you are gonna be drilling into this little fascia piece. I did notice that. That's, that's kind of a new hole that you don't really have referenced. And the other hole that you don't really have referenced, I think, I think like, honestly, I think these are probably the two toughest is the one in the front fascia that you don't have a reference on and this hole here that does not have a reference on it. Now, I think those are the two that kind of make me the most nervous. Um, you know, one other thing to keep in mind, I noticed that it follows this dotted line pretty good, but I'm sure even from the factory, they've got a little slop in them. So what I tried to do is make sure and get the holes lined up as close as I could uh, because your datum is the hole. The datum is not the bottom of this. The datum's the hole. So the hole is going to dictate where the thing sits. So you get your hole right and you've got it. All right, guys. So it's the next day. And if you'll notice, I'm on a different camera. So drop a comment down below and let me know if you like the A6000 or the GoPro better. Um, just let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm thinking about doing different cameras for different situations. So anyway, back to today's normal program. So, as you'll notice, there is a bison flare on this truck. I didn't film this because I wanted to test it first and see how good it was gonna work. And right now, she's right on the money. All right, now I know what you guys are thinking. Okay, you drilled and you know, you were worried about drilling it. Yeah, you guys see me post on the forums. I was super worried. I had a lot of anxiety about drilling because when you set the flare on there, it doesn't quite want to line up, um, and that's deceiving. I did get some good sources that told me that, you know, these templates are legit. There was two other people I ended up having to dig for a long time. There was two other people that ran these templates and said they did work. Uh, but I'm just so terrified to drill. I wanted to try a different method to keep from rusting out the truck and having to rust-proof these holes and worry about them being drilled off-center. I just didn't want to fool with that. So, uh, this is actually 3M tape. Uh, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. No, it'll never work. Uh, okay, well, here's the deal. Your factory clips that are in the bottom, they're all still there. So, keep in mind, the factory clips are super strong. You only have one in your OEM flares. Not much difference here as far as, like, the holding power is still really good. But your top clips, from what I can see, is actually kind of what helps pull that to the fender and just kind of get rid of some of that gap. Now, I wanted to show you what I did to test this. Keep in mind, this fender flare is cracked, so Peak, if you're watching, please honor my request for a new flare. What I ended up doing here is just taking these top ones out, and I bought a super industrial style extreme mounting tape. This is from 3M and it is up to 30 pounds. This is acrylic style tape. It is literally the strongest tape on the market. 
And uh, it's the same kind of stuff, guys, that you're going to see on vent shades and things like that. So, like AVS, if you notice, the muscle truck has that. Dude, those have seriously been on that truck for like 10 years, okay? Like, that stuff is like concrete once it sets up. It's, it's super awesome. So, I thought, you know what? Instead of drilling this thing and running the risk of just screwing up the whole truck, let's try the tape. And I'm going to update you guys. I'm going to let you know if this works or not, and I am not recommending right now in this video for anyone to try this. So right now, we're the only ones that's done this kit without drilling. I'm not going to say it's going to work. I'm not going to say it's not going to work. But what I'm seeing right now is it works. It is completely flush with the body. Now, you'll notice there's a slight gap down here. I have not put the uh, bottom screws in the corner of the flare yet so uh but i just put that on there i've had it sitting on there for about an hour or so i've been kind of walking around looking at it trying to see if there's a gap and the only gaps i can see is just maybe places in the mold or in the stamp for the fender where it's just a little off all right guys so here's how i am bypassing the drilling uh like you said still like i said still have the clips in the bottom to hold you so don't get it twisted don't think that this thing is just going to fly off of there all these are doing is pulling this top flush with the body and it's strong enough to hold so i'm going to drive it a couple days and see how it goes i mean i may eat my words i may end up drilling but i figured let's try this and just be different and see if it's actually possible and it looks like the tape has about a 40 thousandths 50 thousand so thick uh so that's about enough for us to be able to actually the two surfaces to actually touch so i'm just putting one here everywhere out through here um and av if you're watching this i've just seen something that would make this a whole lot easier if you're actually making a conversion flare and it would save you money on your mold um if you took these little inserts that you've made here probably super expensive to injection mold in there and made this a whole piece all the way around and use this same style, like, super industrial extreme mounting tape. I'll guarantee you these would bolt on with no drilling. And you could literally eliminate, like, two hours of cutting freaking paper to put these on your truck. So, AEV, if you're watching, there's an idea. Alright, guys, here's a moment of truth. I'm going to start at the front, and I'm going to work my way around. All right, guys, I just want to show you what I'm using to actually prep this. So just some basic alcohol and a nice soft towel. And I'm basically, I'm, I'm rubbing, of course, everywhere that I'm going to actually apply this to. So all those little tabs and also the fender itself, you want to go over exactly where that's going to apply and make sure this thing is clean. I mean, you are, you're just kidding yourself if you don't clean all this before you put it on. So uh, make sure and get that on there and you should be fine. All right, guys, passenger side is on. And you can see this one fits pretty good down here. I got a small gap that I'm going to take care of with the bolt in the bottom should uh, take care of that. I don't have the bolt in the bottom, but I was able to pick this one up. You notice this is the cracked flare, so Peak or AEV, if you guys are watching, hook me up. Uh, yeah, everything turned out pretty good. It's sitting nice and flush. This side over here, just the smallest little gap, but... Uh, like I said, I don't think you're even going to get all of that out. Even if you got clips in there, I still don't see you getting all of that out. But this fender, you can tell, I think the stamping on this side is a little bit better than my driver's side. I think I've actually got a defective fender over there from GM, just to be honest, because it's this just fits a little bit better. Even the rears are fitting pretty good. Of course, I don't have it on this side, but the other one, you know, all that's checking out good. So... We're going to move on to the back now, and uh, you noticed I went ahead and took my 
my drill template off of there so we are committing to the tape now uh, we're gonna see how things go so I'm gonna go ahead start taping up this rear and slide this thing on and we'll uh, finish the rest of this up I'm actually gonna go ahead and trim the flares just to show you guys what I did previously this is a hack job but this is basically the cutout that you want to go by to run 33's without rubbing anywhere you can see that I, I hacked it to pieces because I knew this was a junk flare you can see where it's been hit and it was coming off so I didn't really take the time to uh, go over it and actually make a good template out of it so this time around I am gonna take my time and we're gonna take a die grinder or a, you know air tool something that I can get in there and just make a few nice intricate little cuts without just destroying the thing and it should look a whole lot better than a hack job with some sheet metal shears but you know what that got me by and it did just fine uh, so I would advise though taking your time and doing the thing right but I'm gonna go ahead get this right rear on and I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna trim these front flares so we can get rid of that rubbing all right guys that's a wrap we got the final flare on snapped right on this one gave me just a little bit of a hiccup one of the uh, clips if it's not centered up perfectly you are gonna have a little bit of trouble I will say that between the two the rear is a little bit more problematic but we're snapped into place and we've got a couple bolt holes here we gotta uh, just put some we just got to fill some of these bolt holes up I've got one right here one here uh, there's also one in the very rear back there you can see it and then I've got a couple more underneath and I've got a push pin here so other than that it's pretty much done I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw my bolts in there get this thing in the air because now we've got to contend with this which uh, all I'm gonna do here guys is push this over keep a good tight pressure on it put me a mark drill a hole and I'm gonna put a uh, another screw in there from uh, the existing flares I kept everything right here nice and handy all right guys just made my final cuts on this flare I think this is gonna turn out a whole lot better than the hack job I did on the other ones so here I had a uh, cutoff tool and uh, a little hack for you guys if you're worried about burning through stuff old license plates work perfect to tell when you're actually through the plastic you see that's a pretty neat cut so all I really did was this tire usually comes in contact in this particular area so I cut back to even this lineup and then I came down here and just cut it off completely so I may take a deburr tool and kind of neaten this up you can tell it's not a hundred percent but it's like 90 so take your license plate tool out and bam look at that but uh, the other thing as you can see here this is the other hole I was telling you guys about I don't have anything for this one since it's a ZR2 not a bison there is no hole there so uh, what we're what we're actually gonna end up doing there is uh, using some clamps that I've got left over from the rear some of these little clips got some of them right there we're gonna put one of those there and that's kinda gonna pull this fender over a little bit and help get this you know this gap to where it looks like this and not like this I mean I'm getting really picky here but that essentially would pretty much complete it so that's kinda where I'm at guys I'm gonna go to the other side now and uh, maybe clean this up just a little bit but yeah you get the idea so uh, next thing we're gonna do we're gonna raise this thing up and I'm gonna show you this other bolt hole that we're about to put in now I don't care to drill this one I don't feel too bad about it you can see without it you got some movement and to get all that out of it I am gonna pull this on around and button up that little hole I'm gonna put a push pin in there uh, and the reason I'm gonna do that is because there's no way to actually put a tapped hole in it unless you use a self tapper and self tappers are just uh, they're kind of hit or miss so I'm gonna use a push pin I'll show you the pin that I'm gonna use it's actually from a Silverado I had a, some spare parts from a Silverado laying around so I'm actually going to use those. I'm going to measure. Uh, I think the hole that's in the flare is going to be almost perfect for that because the last one I used was dead on. So let's get this thing in the air. Let's drill these last two holes and this Boston conversion is done. All right, guys, here's the other hole I was telling you all about. I just drilled that one and it is actually through complete plastic. So if you're worried about metal and rusting, don't worry. It's all plastic in there. 
So now I'm going to pilot this guy up in here. Hopefully it'll go. I made this hole pretty small, and you can see what it's doing. It's already starting to pull that flare in. We're going to push that. Nice. Look at that fitment now, boys. About spot on. Just a little gap, but not bad. All right, guys. So I wanted to show you the rest of uh, the Bison flare trimming. So this will buy you enough clearance to run around on the street, but when you go to wheel this truck, you're definitely going to notice some rubbing. So what I've done here is I've got the flare pulled loose just a little bit. I'm using this license plate to keep from absolutely mangling the uh, inner liner and this plastic uh, molding on the backside there. That way I'll know when I break through the plastic, uh, I can back off and move on to my next section. So basically I'm going to kind of eyeball this, but I'm going to cut down through here and then catch this body line and cut all the way down. Just wanted to show you guys the other side real quick. It turned out pretty good too. Not horrible, but not that great. I think this is probably the neatest way to do this. There is no neat way to trim plastic, guys. As soon as the wheel starts to build up a little bit of RPM and you're trying to hold on to it, you know, it's going to it's going to do that. Now, I probably could even this up just a little bit more. It is kind of crude right through here. But, uh, I mean, it's doing its job. It's not going to rub, and that should let me wheel this truck with no issues. I did try some plastic weld here, and it worked for a minute or two, and then moving the flare around a second ago, I just split it again. So, uh, I'm going to have to try something a little bit different on this. However, uh, I did get a confirmation from Peak Suspension. They are going to send me another flare at no cost. So, huge shout out to Peak. You guys are incredible. Nick, thank you so much. I just, that was awesome experience with going through a damaged product. It was like no questions asked, Nick. You were awesome. If you're watching this video, thank you so much, dude. With that, I think that's going to wrap up the Bison Fender Flare install. Uh, keep in mind, I will be updating you guys as time goes on to see how uh, these flares react to hot, cold weather, things like that. So just follow me on social media. You're going to stay up to date on everything. And uh, also, I'll try to do some more videos on things like this, uh, just kind of uh, general shop tour videos and also updates on the builds. Uh, you know, we're always kind of tinkering around with that stuff. Um, of course, with the virus thing, I've slacked off a little bit. I haven't really been filming as much. Um, you guys probably noticed that, and I apologize, but uh, I've just kind of been enjoying uh, mountain biking and getting outside and kind of just staying away from everything for a while. So... Uh, but don't worry, we're coming back, and uh, I've got more stuff coming for the other builds. Working on something for the muscle truck now. So I know a lot of you guys that watch the ZR2 content uh, are familiar with this this build here. So um, yeah, guys, just keep it locked right here. And if you haven't done it already, be sure and subscribe and click the bell while you're at it. You're going to get notified anytime videos like this are uploaded. So uh, give me a like. If you uh, enjoyed this video, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. And uh, also, don't forget to comment on the camera usage from the first, second half of this video. Uh, let me know what you like better for in the garage installs and things like that. So, with that one, guys, I will catch you all in the next video. Take it easy, and I'll see you on the next one.